You're listening to the Spy Fi After Dark Podcast. And welcome back to Spy Fi After Dark. Today we have an excellent episode, but first, real quick, I want to credit Marina Arsenijevich. I believe I pronounced that right. She produced the song that you're now hearing in the background. Um, it's pretty cool. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. She has like 300,000 Instagram followers, which is like really random. It was a family connection. Um, and today we have a guest. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, my name is Scott Zimer. I had what you call a Star Wars aficionado, I guess. Perfect. We need to, to get a certified nerd for this conversation. Yeah. That's that's qualifying me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about Star Wars, as you've already figured that out by the title. Uh, real quick, though, this podcast is quote unquote sponsored by the <laughs> Iowa Moccas, which I'll tell you about later. Um, and then, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Millen Tweets and on Instagram at Millen Grams. Do you want to shout out anything? Um, yeah, I mean, you can find me on Twitter at Pete from HR. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, yeah, that's it. We should just use his handle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's got to be semi-professional dude. <laughs> oh geez uh all right well with that let's just get into it <laughs> so i figured we could maybe start with what we actually like about the new crop of star wars movies before we just go straight in and trashing it so we can get a little short. bit of rapport I was <laughs> short yeah. um I won't even get us to the break. So we, yeah. <laughs> we we mentioned briefly before we started recording, but I think Rogue One is collectively our favorite Star Wars movie of the yeah of, of the, the Disney trilogy. era Star Wars. So for me, absolutely. it's my favorite period, like of all time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's fair. That's and for fair. Alex, yeah, for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. What What is your favorite, if not Rogue One? So my favorite, like of all of them, is Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Okay. And that was just because. Growing up, like the first movie I remember watching was Star Wars. It was with my grandfather when I was three years old. Okay. So I think their original trilogy has like that kind of sentimental value to me, but Rogue One was just so good. Mm -hmm. It was just, oh man, it was so good. And it, it filled all these boxes that you needed. Like it had an emotional story. It had like, you know, this amazing villain and Krennic that was literally like, he was trying to get something done that you knew was going to lead to this terrible, terrible machine of war. Um, but nothing, nothing will beat that hallway scene with Vader. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness. I remember being in the theater and I just, I just stood up when the lightsaber came on. I just stood up. I was like, Oh, this is the greatest thing in my life. But <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, I would have to say rogue one is a very close contender for my, that's awesome. My favorite movie. Is that always seen the Star Wars equivalent of Captain America picking up Thor's hammer? <laughs> oh man, that's that's a really good way of like <laughs> of comparing them. Yeah, actually I would I would say yeah, cuz you have to remember like up to that point like all the Star Wars movies that featured Vader was really just this they were old, right? Mm -hmm. They it was 1977, 1980, 1983. Yeah. And so it was tough to do these like incredible like animated or like CGI scenes where he's like picking a guy up in the hallway they're and dated. killing him from. But yeah, they're, they're very dated. they're very yep. clearly dated. Mm -hmm. So seeing him actually like be the badass that everyone in the movies was afraid of him for was it was pivotal to the story. Yeah. But then the problem is you now have him being this badass in this hallway. And then it leads right into him not doing any of that stuff in the next movie. So you're kind of he's like, like a romanticized villain in the past. Now exactly. you're like, oh, wait, he is like the most powerful. Yeah, next to them. exactly. And now yeah. you're like, yeah. oh, shit, he's actually like a big deal. Would, would you say it's maybe more accurate that the equivalent is the uh, the pan around shot in the first Avengers? Oh, maybe no, that's no. a little better. <laughs> whether, yeah, when they're going around. Like, I'm sensing an Avengers yeah, theme. Here, really really like really like it. It. <laughs> What's your favorite Avenger? Ah, uh, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's probably because like, yeah. oh, that scene. That scene. Yeah, that, that, one scene. <laughs> that one scene pretty much seals it. No, I mean, it is the best story of all the Avengers movies, I think. Don't look at me. Classically. I, have you never seen them? No, I have. I, I mean. Okay. I, well, no, you're going to say Infinity War. That's fine. Um, I get it. It's not. Infinity War was. Uh, 
I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, yeah. but it wasn't my favorite. Okay. It's not my favorite either, but um, it's the most hype for me. Out okay. Of, yeah. All right. My favorite scene in all of the MCU is actually the Captain America saving, supposedly trying to save his oh, yeah, comrades the grenade. with the fake yeah. grenade. All right. That's let's, my let's, oh, yeah. let's steer the train back yeah. to the tracks. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, it's it was as important. It was that it was that like pivotal moment in the movie, like seeing Vader in the hallway, I guess, was you knew it was like you knew the stakes. You knew that this was not going to end well for them. Mm -hmm. Their irony of it. Yeah. Exactly. Irony of it, it, it intensified the emotions too. Yeah, involved. exactly. But what about the new trilogy? I mean, anything. Well, hold on. What is your rating for Rogue One out of 10? <laughs> out of 10? Yeah. He's no, I, mean, I, guess, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he loves I, it. Uh, <laughs> I got some, I got to get some validation. I, okay? I, no, that's fine. I, I actually, when I go see movies, cause I'm a huge, just like movie buff in general. Awesome. Um, but Whenever I go see movies, I do give them out of 10. I think I gave Rogue One a 9.5 out of 10. So how much of that is the hallway scene? How much of that is the hallway yeah. scene? Oh, <laughs> man. Nine. <laughs> About 7.99% of that. 7.99, yeah. I mean, it just, like... I, so, like, for me, like, I love the villains. The villains make Star mm -hmm. Wars. They Like, you don't... Like there was, yeah, see, <laughs> this guy now is he my, gets validation. This guy, yeah, because because yeah. Palpatine's my favorite villain, actually of all time, of all time, like outside of Star Wars. Okay, yes, that's actually really impressive. I like so. that. Well, and like if you know his whole story, like he's he's not just this like conniving like senator who just happened to be the most powerful Sith Lord at the time. He his actual backstory is phenomenally way more dark than that. Like he killed his whole family to join, right? Yeah. Just to join like, approached him and yeah, said, yeah. Plagueis came up to him and he was like, yo, I need your help. And he was like, I have this power. And he kind of looks at people yeah. of lesser ambition or power as like beneath him. So he's perfect. Yeah. There's actually, there's a great quote from, uh, one of the star Wars games, uh, from this, like, Dark Lord of the Sith, who literally says, "My will is the destiny of lesser men," and that's basically how Palpatine treats people below him. Yeah, it's people like, are like at the whim of his fate. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, but okay. Yeah. So that seems like a good enough segue into <laughs> trashing the movies. Trashing the movies, hell yeah. Because <laughs> I'm really excited to trash the movies. Obviously, yeah. the the payoff for Palpatine is not terribly um, exciting in the final movie and i don't i don't hate the final movie i don't even hate that they brought him back necessarily but oh no i don't either um it just seemed like a weird way to cap that off i think what you have to remember about that that separation between the last jedi and then the rise of skywalker was <sighs> ryan johnson literally had this roadmap out in front of him that JJ Abrams was like, look, I'm setting these specific story plots up for you from force awakens into the rise of Skywalker or, uh, uh, the last Jedi. And mm. Ryan Johnson was like, sick. I'm gonna throw those all out. <laughs> yeah. That's my assessment. Yeah. yeah. He just like, didn't care. And I mean, a lot of that is just, he, he wanted to tell a different kind of story and I get that and that's fine. Be ambitious, you know, go out on a limb and do your own thing, but do it in a different saga of star Wars because you, you you're or trying to say spin off. Yeah. You're trying yeah. to say franchise, but you don't want to say it. it yeah. Yes. You know, like franchise, basically. <laughs> like franchise is too sacred. <laughs> Not only that, like you, the, the, the star Wars saga is about the skywalkers and then, Introducing this character of Ray who has no ties to him and making her the hero, um, making Finn like Finn could have been the greatest Star Wars character of all time. Like he was this defector from the Empire. He could have no or from the first order, he could have known all these things and how to help them from the inside. And instead they made him this like comic relief that became less and less important as each movie came out. Mm -hmm. He was important in seven. He was very important. Yeah, so he was set up well. Yeah, he, he was, was set up well. He was set up to be this this big like payoff because in the tra if you watch the trailers, it it implies that he is the new Luke, 
And a lot of the theories that went around at the time before The Last Jedi came out was that he was Lando's son that was somehow you know, force sensitive or whatever. And he was going to be the new Jedi, but as that would have been, been cool. That would have been cool. That would have been really cool. Yeah. And unfortunately it, that's, that's basically what the rise of Skywalker was, was a lot of pandering to fan theories. Um, I think I would have, I would have not made him connected to any of the other characters personally. That's kind of what I wanted at the end. I wanted him to be a new character and I wanted him to be this like fresh face, but I wanted Ray to Ray should have been connected to someone. She sh- she needed to be, and yeah. that was the thing. And then Star Wars is a lot about legacy, though. That's all Star Wars is. It's it's, it's about literally family about and your choices and, yeah. and all that stuff. So I get it. But Ray, like, they tried to destroy that in the Last Jedi by saying that her parents were nobodies, mm-hmm. and then they completely ignore that in the Rise of Skywalker. Kylo's like, I know your parents are nobodies. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. By the way, your parents are super important. Somehow, I don't know why, but they're mm-hmm. super important. I also don't understand like why Pal- like how Palpatine can actually be a sexual being of any capacity. Right? It's weird, right? <laughs> without without just for the sake of trying to create someone to take his place. In which case, why would he ever abandon that saying that? Well, that's like why would he keep loose ends of himself? Yeah, out, exactly. Out, that's, out in, you know what I mean? That's it where it make, falls it, apart. It's weak. It's weak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like well, and he like so his. Ray's father was just a failed clone of Palpatine. So he's not, she's not Palpatine's granddaughter. She's just Mm. his pseudo daughter because her dad was just a failed clone of Palpatine that got away, met this girl. They had a kid. And then if I remember correctly, this, the assassin killed both of her parents. And after they left her on Jakku, and I'm just kind of like, okay, like, why go after her then? Like, why make her this big, important person if Palpatine can just, like, clone himself and reclaim, like, the First Order? It, it just, like... Remember the idea I had for how to make Nine better? I what? will remember it as soon as you start saying what it was. <laughs> Essentially, I like the... I, sorry, I'll, I'll, no, you're good. just really quickly, like, kind of on what you're talking about, like... I felt like cloning was kind of this potential route to bring in new and dark challenges for uh, the protagonists coming from the sit side. Cause that's something that was more talked about on their end. Always. Like oh, I'm yeah. surprised yeah. that like nine didn't incorporate, like I actually thought that they were going to bring back like some old Sith. That would have been different. That would have been cool. Maybe a little, maybe maybe a little much. I like the idea. Of I that still for, wouldn't have done it. I mean, they do it kind of because if you pay attention to what Palpatine says, there are other Sith spirits living inside his body. Yes, and that it I have seemed, very strong opinions about the yeah, Sith. I don't like. So. Yeah, I just um, you know how like they had the Final Order kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah, like where have they been this whole time? To me, threatening to destroy everything is like cheap. Yeah, versus the idea of bringing back like more of what Palpatine is just seems more like elusive and dark to me. I don't know why versus just upping the ante on the military side. It just, it got old and it was like yeah. too quick. And I, I, I wanted them to bring like a new spin, especially since supposedly snow, which was, which was a cheap throwaway and snow oh. could have been a great character. The fact that he was a throwaway f- due to him being a disposable and cloning. Yeah. Why, I wish they would have like, Brought in more of that. Well, I mean, let's not forget they did need an excuse for one of the characters to say on your left. It's actually a good point. Yeah. <laughs> really? I missed it. We're going to keep on going. On your left? That's from Captain America. No, I know. And it's from, it's from, fin, or uh, Captain America and End the game. last one, Endgame. Says, well, I missed yeah, it. Yeah, Sam says it's one right over your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one actually says on your left. It's just the same thing. It's, yes. Yeah. Like, it's, you should have landed. Yes, 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 yes. The final, the final fight. Right. Yes. Whatever. They deserved to laugh, but didn't get it. I got, I'm laughing. I got He's it. laughing. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was funny. Yes. <laughs> All right. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> no, I think I, I'm like, and that's a good point. Like, as far as like the, the Sith go, I think my problem is I love the Sith. Like, I love the Sith lore. I, I love where they came from. Um, and the, the, Biggest problem right off the bat that I had with the rise of Skywalker was you weren't supposed to be able to clone force users. It didn't work that way. 
Like just because you gave that person a duplicate body didn't mean that that duplicate body was going to be as powerful in the force because there's it wasn't a, the original person. There's probably like conservation of like energy or something yeah. going on. You can't you can't double force. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, you can't just be like, oh my god, if I'm this powerful, imagine if there's two of me. Yeah. I'd be twice as powerful. No, it it didn't work that way. And then like they were like, well, what if we just did this and had every Sith embody this one body because the body of Palpatine isn't the original body. That's also a clone. And that's the other part that doesn't make sense. If he's a clone, why is he all messed up? Like if he's a clone and they've oh, perfected I these. It was the original I thought body. it was the original. Everybody that's, did. That's and why then, he's like, he's essentially decrepit. That's why he's all messed up, right? Yeah. yeah. No, it's because if you read the novelization of the book, he is a clone. He, that, that actual Palpatine, like, died he was he died at the death star they just had his cells to grow another palpatine hmm. and his spirit lingered on that's even weaker it is even weaker see that's the problem is the novelizations which are official canon because of disney um it's weaker or not like i don't like that but i also don't like the idea of palpatine just surviving because it kind well, of like yeah. dismantles the he whole shouldn't, he shouldn't have survived but it, being a clone is even worse yeah yes it is, I would yes, yeah. like I would have been fine. That's why I don't want Palpatine? Yeah, nine. Yeah. Well, yeah, ideally I don't either. Yeah. It would have I been. Mean, I, I, I don't see, like the idea of the legacy being thrown out. Exactly. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, I see. Well, I see nine. The problem of nine being it's a conflict between you want to create new characters and you also they felt like they had to play pay off old characters at the same yeah, time. Yeah, no, no one talked about this thing. before. He also he, he that nine essentially also had to like make reparations for eight causing kind of like a split in the I mean, audience. It's, it's really, yeah, like bring it's them back. really exactly. clear that there was a difference of creative vision, which caused a narrative fracture that was physically unrepairable. Well, so uh, I don't know how I want to touch on this, but like go for it. The last Jedi had, and anybody who knows me knows that I, I absolutely hate this woman, but Kathleen Kennedy, who is the executive producer of all of Lucasfilm or like all of the Star Wars properties right now, um, essentially turned The Last Jedi into a massive social justice warriors promotion. That's what I told him after he watched it. Yeah. So That's what like, it felt like if you actually pay attention to The Last Jedi, the only people who make the right decisions are women. <laughs> Freaking! How did Rose catch back up to Finn to stop him from being the hero? There's, there's literally no way she could have turned around and caught up to him to stop him from destroying the the battering ram to break down the wall. Why did Holdo not tell anybody about her plan? Like, why was it some super? And that that problem right there actually <laughs> that could have been solved with a single sentence. Mm-hmm. Her not saying her what her plan was. Like, hey, we're gonna like make it look like we're trying to get away in the ship, but we're going to actually dump off all these like lifeboats kind of thing. All you had to say was, we think there's a a spy on board. So I don't want to tell you guys my plan because I don't know who the spy could be, but they don't do that. She just like keeps the plan from it. And and Poe even says that he's like, tell us what your plan is. And she's like, no, I'm good. I don't want to. Yeah. It was, um, it was frustrating to watch. Yeah. She, she may have the same first letter as Kevin Feige, but she's no Kevin Feige. No. Not not even close. <laughs> Fucking MC. <laughs> I'm just well, gonna keep doing that here. Man. You, you should for the. <laughs> he's a uh, he's actually in in charge of Star Wars now. What? Yeah. Like, Kevin Feige doesn't work for MCU anymore. He's. I think I, think I did hear about I think that. No one's flushing. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, we need a break. <laughs> like, did, he, like, did he get promoted to like chief creative officer yeah. of Disney <laughs> or something? Chief, yeah, something like that. Because well, so everybody wanted Kathleen Kennedy out, and then they renewed her contract and then they started realizing like, dude, all these problems are like, because she stepped in and did this. That's actually why, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have watched the Mandalorian on Disney plus. It's, it's I a, have, Oh dude, it's a phenomenal show. It's phenomenal. If you haven't yeah, seen it, it, it you, you, you definitely I, should watch it. So I watched it. I did not watch it originally. I watched it well after it come out. Like yeah. I only saw it like a month ago. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I mean, I thought it was very good. I, I don't think it was as good as the hype made it out to be in my opinion, but it was yeah. very good. It was a solid like eight and a half show for me. Like, Oh yeah. 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 yeah, know, yeah. There, if, there were really good story beats that I really would like to see continued um, as they go. Mm-hmm. But I did feel like the whole thing lacked a little bit of um, uh, what's the word? Um, continuity through the whole show. For the most part. Yeah. The only continuity you really get 
there, no, I'm try, I'll try to avoid spoilers as much as I can. Is the asset is yeah. like the main sure. continuity, and that's sure. would you have more continuity if you had more out of context knowledge by like reading books? Like, are you? No, gonna, are, see, you are you? Are you? Okay, that's the say. that's the thing about the new Star Wars under Disney's leadership is if you watch the movies, you get about 85% of the story. You know 85% of the story. Most of the expanded stuff is in between or behind the scenes stuff. Um like a lot of the novels take place in between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And it's just kind of filling in the gaps of like what everybody's been doing or like the animated show Rebels, which I absolutely hate. Um I just that's basically like how Vader and the Inquisitors like hunted down the last of the Jedi mm-hmm. and how the rebellion was started. Um, what didn't you like about it? So wait, real quick, just for people who were curious, Kevin Feige does still work for Marvel, but he was oh, promoted he? up to chief creative officer pretty oh, much the whole just thing. for di- okay. Yeah, so he he's the president of Marvel and he's also chief creative officer of the comics, television, and animation. Wow. Okay. okay. So basically he controls everything. He's, he basically does it all. That's yeah. awesome. I'm sorry. I completely forgot your question. Oh, no, I just asked, what did you like? About I haven't seen Rebels. Oh, I haven't either. I've um, just seen the Clone Wars show. Clone Wars is a phenomenal show, but mm, it's I, very good. that's yeah. another show that I think does not... I don't want to say deserve the hype it gets, but the hype lingers long after the show's over like the show's done like the final season just finished on disney plus Mm -hmm. but everybody's talking about oh i can't wait because they just announced that a spinoff of that show is coming from a character a couple characters that showed up in the newest season and i'm like dude can we just get something like brand new instead can we like focus on a completely different era of star wars but disney's like milking the clone wars and the galactic civil war for like all that they have. And that's that's kind of like that's why I don't like Rebels. The the main thing is like Well, so to circle back a little bit, I think that's why I liked Rogue One so much. Was it was a new piece of yeah, exactly. story. You and saw completely new, new characters. Space. Exactly. Yeah. It's brand new stuff. The Clone Wars is like Okay. Like I know that the Jedi are involved in this. I know the clone and don't get me wrong, dude. I love the clones. Like the clones mm. are amazing. The, actually, the whole lore of the Clone Wars period is very cool. Oh yeah. Really, there's a lot of really cool lore in Star Wars. There is. Well, and it's, and it's there almost was, it's almost criminal how much it is just not used. Well, and that's that's what Disney did back in 2015 when they bought Star Wars. They were like, everything that wasn't in the movies is what we're gonna call legends. So it could have happened. But until we actually use it in new material, it's not technically canon. So you have characters like Darth Bane or Darth Nihilus. Um, Darth Bane started the rule of two with the Sith. Darth Nihilus was this incredibly powerful Sith Lord who lived 4,500 years before the first movie. And it, you just you have all this incredible lore that Disney's like, no, we don't want to use that. And they're really on the nose with those Sith names. I know, yeah. I know. In general, they are, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. the, most of them are like directly involved with what they are. Like Nihilus yes. was the Lord of Hunger. Everything he did was just about himself. He didn't care about anybody else. Bane, because you're, you're two. It's like your predis yeah. or your the guy who uh, mm-hmm. who you your pupil will t- like take your place. Master and apprentice. Yeah. yeah. Two there should be. But your apprentice will kill you. Plagueis. Plagueis, yeah, he was. Well, uh, he was supposed to be a blight on the Jedi. Sidious, we talked about this. Sidious, Remember Seed and Vader's father. Mm-hmm. That's Which great. I think it's funny that most people don't know that that Vader actually stands for father. I'm like that. That's like a dead giveaway. It's crazy. Who knows that? Yeah. But as far as I don't like, I don't like trashing Star Wars too much. I like trashing the people involved in Star Wars. Because those decisions directly affect how people perceive certain things that like I grew up with. Like I grew up with this fountain of Sith knowledge and like, it, you know, the new Jedi Order. Luke started a whole Jedi Order and there were hundreds of Jedi. But then the movie came along and was like, no, Luke just like cried to himself. And I was like, Wait, oh my okay, God, I so failed. the books have Luke creating a new Jedi Order yeah. after episode six? Yeah, so he he creates the new Jedi Order. He creates, like, there you have Jedi, his his nephews, or his niece and two nephews. Han and Leia had three kids, Jason, Jaina, and Anakin Solo. Um, Anakin Solo is killed during this invasion called the Yuuzhan Vong War. And then Jason is killed by Jaina when he falls to the dark side and becomes Darth Cadus. 
But you have these like these incredible stories where Luke actually did succeed and he did rebuild the Jedi order. You know, all of the things that he believed in, in the return of the Jedi, like the power of redemption and the Jedi have to be this guiding light and they have to be this force for good. And then the force awakens comes around along and they're like, no, we want Luke to just lose all hope. Yeah. To be a bitch. Yeah. I explained, you know, I was talking to Millen about this. Like it actually doesn't make sense no. to allow it because of, the accomplishments he made in in, in six. Yeah, it, it completely wiped out him redeeming Vader at all. We, you know, like essentially, like mm-hmm. Vader. We, we, I, I don't want to go over it too much, but essentially, Vader is like a maniacal, genocidal, yeah, person, right? Mm-hmm. And he's he's probably the most powerful in the universe, but he's like running on like seventy percent. So we'll say Palpatine. Yeah, in is, the right? suit, he's like eighty percent of what he could have been. Right. Yeah. So it's like you got Palpatine and you have Vader, and Luke is standing up to his father after finding out what his father is, and really can't take his father on in in you know if it was like all out against each oh, other. Yeah, yeah. Father's gonna hold back, but he also has emperor right but he he essentially gets rewarded for having the courage to be suicidal right to do what he thinks is right and, and he gets re- but he gets rewarded right because yeah. his father actually turns the emperor gets killed like everything ends up it's like a, it's working out so it's like story. dude you got like you you got more than you deserve right <laughs> exactly yeah. so why would you like fall into why this pit you? of like you know yeah. whatever he mm-hmm. was so Maybe it makes no sense like melancholy like yeah. it gave rise to legends and luke skywalker couldn't say and i'm like dude shut up man like you saved the galaxy like you you did this incredible thing and you redeemed arguably the most evil person, singular person in the galaxy. You made him like realize like, galaxy, oh, maybe yeah. what they did mm-hmm. was like not a good idea. <laughs> like, All right. And that seems like a good place for breaking. <laughs> <Yeah>. right <now. laughs> we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Hey there, podcast listeners. This episode of Spy Fi After Dark is sponsored by me. That's right, me. Specifically, it's sponsored by the Iowa Mockus Project, which is an electoral technology project and accompanying live stream happening sometime in August. I've talked about the Mockus on here before, so I'm not going to bore you with the details. Head on over to iowamockus.com to learn more about it. But the short version is that it's a caucus app. We're going to basically show that the Iowa Democratic caucuses in 2020 were a sham and should never have been accepted. It's going to be a great time. going to be lots of fun. Check it out, iowamaucus.com. But specifically, what I wanted to talk to you about today was the Iowa Mockus devlogs that I'm doing on YouTube. You can find these by heading on over to YouTube and searching for SpyFi, which is the channel that the devlogs are on. Or I mean, you could just search for Iowa Mockus devlog, I guess, if you wanted to. And basically, it's a behind the scenes process of how I'm building the Iowa Moccas. The first devlog was on the marketing strategy for the Moccas, and the second devlog, which I'm currently working on, is on how I'm building the software. It's kind of like a layman's version of how I make software. Anyways, we'll have other topics on there too. I'm hoping to produce episodes every other week or so, and they give you an insight into what the process of building something like this is like. So head on over to YouTube, Search for Spy Fi, search for Iowa Mockus Devlog, check them out, hit that subscribe button, you know how it is. That's it for me. Let's get back to the video. On your left. <laughs> <laughs> just like you that. literally asked for it. I know. So. Not even like, could you grab that? It's on your left. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just, just on, your, on left. your left. I'm gonna start saying that in my everyday life. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> it's our new intro. <laughs> Instead of turning my dick around, <laughs> I'm just gonna be like on your left and I'm gonna yell it out my window and hope that someone heard me that I'm changing lanes. Like <laughs> just you're listening to the Spy Fi After Dark podcast on your left. <laughs> Hit that like or subscribe button <laughs> on, on your, your left. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. It's, oh, it's not on your left. No. no. <laughs> I'm like, where, where? where's the button location? <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's let's begin the reconstruction process. Putting everything back together. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could wipe the slate clean, seven through nine, mm-hmm. gone, how would we recreate the overall story arc? Honestly, like let's let's say we have to keep the same characters 
Okay, so you want okay. Not with all their attributes, but the same blueprints of the characters. Okay. Or at least the main characters. The main characters, sure. Yeah. Okay. If, like we have to keep Fen, we have to keep Ray. Oh, try to really try to change yeah. as little as possible. You, so try, you want like a different story, but the same. Yeah, re- regarding the Try to change parts. as little as possible about the architecture. Yes, the architecture itself. Okay. The plot can be completely yes. different. Okay. I got you. I got you. In that case, honestly, I I think I would just make <sighs> I would make Ray just a Jedi apprentice. Luke succeeded in making the Jedi temple and she, Luke has to keep it a secret. Who You could even keep her as Palpatine's granddaughter. You could even keep that the same. Just keep, she has this dark past. So Luke then becomes the new Obi-Wan in keeping from Ray who she is, or even better yet, you that- can, you could make it like, no, like, actually, I, I kind of do like, like there's a darkness inside of I her. I like that. Yeah. Where and it's she's like, like nine ends up being like, it, but, oh, sorry. But he has to like keep that away. Yeah. Nine exactly. has like three tonality, except there's no fight and like conversion. Exactly. He actually succeeds. Yeah. He actually is. Like, <laughs> in like keeping her from keeping her turning. From well, that was another thing that was so stupid about it. Like she just because she's Palpatine's granddaughter, she can use force lightning. <laughs> Don't even. That's not dude, how it that works. I know. <laughs> it, it's just dumb. <laughs> It didn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Like there's literally half the Plagueis book talks about what happens if you use force lightning and you don't know what you're doing. It's like you become this wrinkled monster and you could even kill yourself trying to do it. Like, are you familiar with Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah. Okay. So when Iroh is talking about like, if you're not careful about transferring lightning through your body, it could literally kill you. It's the same thing. But in the movie, they're just like, no, she's a Mary Sue. She can literally do whatever she wants. Well, and like I'd also talked to Millen about that, how like just in the movies, that's all the only context I have, like Mm -hmm. the differentiating factor usually between Jedi and Sith in terms of like fighting capabilities is force lightning. There's like no other like. Yeah. So why would she just know that? Just be able to do it. She's never even like imbued in the dark. Like if anything, Mace. Mm-hmm. Should have like had that capability. So that's which he kind of did because he was deflecting in three. Well, but whatever. yeah, and that's, that's it's funny that you say that because it, and and you don't know the lore. Mace Windu is actually a master of a lightsaber form called Vapod, which is like you thread the needle of the dark side to give yourself more power while still seeing like pure and in the light. And so he that's why he looks like that. That's why he's so intense because he is like literally walking this tightrope of if he messes up a little bit he'll fall to the dark side just trying to use this power to protect himself that'd be cool, or fight. That'd be cool if uh, ray wanted to learn his exactly his type. if they had done that but the movie set up ray to be like this physical embodiment of the balance of the force and that's not how that works like she can't just you, you can't use both sides of the force and everybody's like yeah you can and they're called gray jedi they're not gray jedi gray jedi are not a thing that's so dumb it just like it just doesn't make sense. It's it's cool metaphorically that it's like okay, there it, like like you sh- like there you shouldn't be or you don't have to live your life you know in that kind of black and white architecture. Right. But in for the sake of Star Wars, like right. you're just destroying the whole like Star Wars set something up and like do you know what I mean? At its core, it's literally just a good versus evil story. And I know I'm sorry. I know I got off on a tangent here with the, uh, rebuilding the story, but she. <sighs> For a long time, it was established that you can't like, so if I wanted to, if I was a Jedi and I had healing powers, but I somehow learned how to use force lightning, that would weaken my ability to heal because I've now taken my devotion to the light and corrupted it with the powers of the dark side. Plus like, plus this, plus the Sith, from my understanding, at least some of them that we've seen like Dooku and, um, Maul. Well, I was gonna say Dooku and maybe Maul, but possibly Palpatine. Just based off like the the dialogue in the movies, the inherent advantage they have, which is the problem I had, and in, in, hear me out, it's gonna be kind of weird, but like the inherent <laughs> advantage they have is, and like this is Yoda, he's also in here, but a little different. So like Yoda will say, and maybe Mace, maybe, and then you have Dooku and you have uh, Palpatine. Mm-hmm. They've like done more than converge both sides they've they have some studying or understanding of their counterpart yeah especially dooku and palpatine right so it's to their advantage to be dark but that's unfair so there should be some kind of 
balancing. The balancing is essentially probably their inability to be pure and use exactly right because Yoda like Yoda is clearly very knowledgeable because when he fought Palpatine in three, he like yeah he can stop the, so he knows yeah. he's old so he's probably like treaded here and like no mm-hmm. treaded. and you're right in like you know Ray and uh, what's his name Kylo Kylo they're just like essentially they're trivializing like what would take you know legacy and or like tireless effort of with research and understanding and yeah. all that like it's just like it's taken some of those aspects away from star Wars. Granted it is, it is different. And I think some people do like it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I get it that there's going to be people out here who are out there, you know, that like the, the current structure of it. But I think if you look at it at its core and th- this is me kind of like reconnecting back to how I would change things. Ray learns how to use the force and fight out of nowhere in the movies. She just knows how to do it. Like she can use the force to call the lightsaber to her. When she's fighting Kylo at the end of the movie. Why can she do that? She's literally never done that in her life. But she can suddenly do it. And then the books try to explain it. That she came into contact with Kylo Ren. And she learned all of his abilities. And I'm like no dude. That just makes her super overpowered. So if you make her this Jedi trainee. Or this like Jedi Padawan. Who's struggling to control this. Unseen turmoil within her and then you have Palpatine uh, Palpatine should have been in it from the beginning if he was going to be a player He should have been in it from the beginning. Yes, so I would have had him. Let's assume he's not so you want to assume he's not Let's okay. see, We're going with Snoke. Okay, so if we want to stick just with Snoke, then we'll say that Snoke is a I wouldn't make him a clone obviously he's Mace Windu Everybody thought that. Uh, everybody thought for a long time. Really I, okay. my, my, my favorite theory was um, him being Jar Jar Binks. Oh, but, I mean, oh, oh. Mace Windu theory was the most reasonable. That one was crazy when you showed me like a video. Or- <laughs> I hate that stuff, dude. Dude, he's so good. All though. of the like supposed yeah, it's so good. They're just like, it's, it's clearly him. And I'm like, you guys he's, are literally just piecing stuff together. He's, yeah, he's, they're he's, literally he's, just attributing filmmaking mistakes of the, yeah, of the exactly. one to three he's to like force a, powers. He's like yeah. single handedly annoying Palpatine. Yeah. That's, his whole, game. that's his whole freaking plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I'm gonna mess good. it up, but I'm gonna make it look like I'm a complete bungling idiot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I thought it was a phenomenal theory, even if it's completely ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> no, but I, I love the I love the idea of him, him being Mace Windu. Although I will say for me, the weird thing was how did the first order even happen in the first place? Well that's the that's the big like unanswered question in the lore right now. Like there's and a, why would they still have stormtroopers? Yeah. Well, and they kind of try to touch on that in the force awakens. Cause Kylo's like, how well are your troops trained? If they can just like disobey an order on a whim, maybe the Supreme leader should use clones. So that right there shows you they're not using clones. They're not familiar with clone technology having survived. Mm-hmm. Well, we know they're not using clones right. because we have different characters who are storm no troopers. exactly daniel craig is actually star wars or he's a he's a stormtrooper in the force awakens oh yeah i remember seeing that yeah, people yeah. don't know that i didn't know that yeah he's the one you never see his face but no. you do hear his voice yeah he's uh when ray's locked up she's the one that uses force persuasion or he's the stormtrooper that she has free him yeah and then he drops his gun and walks out of the room yeah that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like there's tons, of, dude. There's so many cameos in those. Movies. I'd almost be. I'm. I'm not sure if this is a case, but I almost bet he wasn't actually even in the costume. He just did the voice. voiceover after. I'm gonna be upset if he wasn't. Because you wouldn't would, have to be. Yeah, you wouldn't have to be at all. Be. But I think that would be so funny if he was. I don't think he like, was. You would think for commitment's sake you'd do it. Yeah, but, but there's no. Know. As far as I know, there's no images of him in a stormtrooper suit. Exactly. So I don't think he was. I think they were just like, hey, can you record this real quick? They just yeah, called I it. I almost bet it was, <laughs> it was literally like they're in post. They're like, what if we just got some random yeah. like high end actor to do this random role for two <laughs> we seconds? Just got James Bond to free Ray. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. And somebody was just like drunk at a table reading one night and they're just like, dude, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out. Daniel Craig. Craig. It's genius. <laughs> no, like, well, and then like you have. Uh, what is it? Simon Pegg from uh, who plays Scotty in the Star Trek movies. He's the guy that gives Ray the food in the beginning of the movie. The oh, big I didn't alien guy. I neither. Yeah, but like you have cameos all over the place. Uh-huh. It's ridiculous. But uh, back back to the the main thing. Like I yeah, I would make. I would probably make Snoke like a long forgotten 
practitioner of the dark side. Like he, he could have been a rival to Palpatine, but Palpatine kept him in check. Mm -hmm. And now that Palpatine's gone, Snoke has been like rebuilding this force in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And then he finds out about Luke's grandson and he's like, what better way to destroy the Jedi than to take the hero of the galaxy's grandson or uh, nephew, rather nephew, uh, nephew yeah. and convert him to the dark side. What if it's a reverse rebellion situation where the first order is the ragtag rebellion, like the remnants of the empire trying to trying reassert to hold dominance? On to their, yeah. And so that would have been a good one too. Luke's Jedi uh, order is keeping the peace. Like more established. Keeping the peace. Yeah, that that's actually a, another part of the story. In well, that's another expanded universe story. There, the majority of everything that happens is Luke rebuilds the the um the Jedi Order, and he has to deal with like Grand Admiral Thrawn, who is one of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time, um, or Grand Admiral um, Yasani Asard. It's these people who like held on to the belief of the Empire. And didn't want to give up their power. So they were like fleet commanders and they had these like ragtag fleets that they were keeping control of like imperial planets and stuff. Where does the Mandalorian fall in the timeline exactly? The Mandalorian is like six months to a year after Return of the Jedi. Okay. Because when he first talks to, I can never remember the guy's name, but when he, when he first talks to Carl Weathers, (laughs) he, uh, (laughs) Carl Weathers is like. I can pay you an Imperial credits. And he's like, the empire has been disbanded for I yeah. can't remember, whatever he says. Um, that money's no good out here. I need mm-hmm. something better. And so you, you get this idea that like the empire is now in hiding. That's why the, the client um, is like hidden. Yeah. Stormtroopers are dirty. They're not mm-hmm. organized. See, I would have, I would have doubled down on that. Mm-hmm. If I were designing this, I probably wouldn't have had Luke have a whole Jedi order. I would have had him have like a small band. Yeah. yeah. I would have had him like in the building process. Like, yeah. Like literally he's got like five or six yeah. Jedi with him mm-hmm. and like some trainees. Yeah. So I would like have been one fine with that. One per Jedi or something like that. Yeah. Right? I would so have been like totally 12 fine with people, that. Yeah. Right. And he's the only Jedi master. That's actually exactly how it was in the expanded universe before so, Disney got a hold of it. So <laughs> that's that's where I would have started. And I would have had instead of the first order, or you could even call them the first order, but I would have just had like remnants of the Empire trying to work together to reassemble yeah. some sort of a governance structure. That's absolutely how it should have been. That that to me would have been a greater stakes than this out of nowhere first order, which in the books, the first order is they're surviving remnants and resources of the empire. That's why they use stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. That's why their ships look the same. Well, and imagine, imagine if essentially you start out episode seven and Luke is, you know, helping his um, Jedi sort of fight back these remnants of the yeah. empire. Mm-hmm. And it's like this ongoing fight, fight that they're doing like here and there on various mm-hmm. planets. And then all of a sudden he realizes there's something behind yeah. this force and that's Snoke. Yes, exactly. Would you still have Kylo? I would, yeah. yeah. So, so if, Kylo, you, if you still have Kylo, then you could have that. You could have two core, um, um, essentially like groups trying to establish himself, right? And then you also have Ray, who's um, talking to Mike. Ray, who's essentially <laughs> like up and coming. You have yeah. Kylo, who's up and coming, and you have Snoke trying to get Ray, and then you'll have Luke trying to get Kylo. Well, in my yeah. in my so version, essentially it's I'm like thinking, a race to see who can. Who my can, version, can I'm thinking Kylo right is still on luke's team and turns by the end of seven. see that's exactly how i would have done it yeah. yeah you would do it like that i would make it so snoke like snoke has his whole thing is he has to destroy who luke is and who luke was was the embodiment of hope that's why the fourth star right. wars movie is literally called a new hope it's it, it, that's the whole point of the original trilogy is now there's hope for the galaxy again it's been ni- 18, 19 I years. My, only, my, I guess my only problem is aside from Snoke, who would be in hiding. Um, if there's still remnant, remnants of, well, not even remnants. If if Luke is building up an order and he has Jedi on his side, like what's stopping him from overpowering them? See, that's the thing. You that's would, why they would, would have to like, it would be like a dirt skirmish. Like they would fight from the shadows and retreat. Right. And then, you know, that's what, well, that's what I'm saying is both sides are still very scrappy. Yeah, I know. But I would want like force force bound 
scrap yeah. on the dark side aside from Snoke because he's in, he's in hiding essentially. Well, okay, so okay. Snoke would be training like dark H- Jedi. Here's an idea. Yeah. So so if not, so if not if what not if, Kylo, what if Snoke has like a contingent of the the Inquisitors or whatever they're called? Even that would have been okay. Yeah. Like I would have been fine with that because the like Inquisitors the, were just kidnapped so children. The one, it's the same. So I just started playing the Star Wars game. Um, the Souls like one that just came out. Oh, oh, uh, crap. Jedi Fallen Order. The Fallen Order. Yeah. The, that's a the great Inquisitor game. Inquisitor is the bad guy, right? That's an Inquisitor. Yeah. So, wait, so you haven't beaten it yet? No. Okay. So I'm not going to run it. I'm not very far into it. Okay. It's um, a great game. But that kind of character, like, give him a contingent of those. Yeah. Well, he I'd needs. Okay that's that. what I'm saying. Like, so like kind Snoke of would like need that. Henchman or whatever. You know. But like force bound henchman. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. If you don't want Kylo well, that's, on that side. The Inquisitors are. Are they force yes, they sensitive are. force enabled? They have, yeah, so yeah, and they would have to be with this they new have design. Lightsabers. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. They're they're force trained. I guess the word would be like dark adepts. Like they're not mm-hmm. Jedi, and they're not trained as to be as powerful as, as like an apprentice or Sith. Mm-hmm. But they have enough power that they are. They're formidable. They're fighters. formidable enough yeah. to to hunt down Jedi, and that's what Vader trained them for. And yeah. they answer directly to Vader. Which this is all in season one of Rebels. Mm -hmm. You meet Jason Isaac's character, the Grand Inquisitor, and then you find out that there's other Inquisitors out there, like the Seventh Sister and the the Ninth Brother and stuff like that. Um, (laughs) She's like a bunch of like mall type characters, basically. Yeah, that would be sick. Well, and that's that's actually a really interesting point that you make that because if you look at Maul and his his original story. Palpatine didn't actually consider him a real Sith. He was just an on-call assassin. He felt more like a mercenary or assassin. Yeah, he he only gave him the Darth title to placate concerns or, you know, like trying to fight back at Palpatine. Like Palpatine was rewarding him with what Maul thought was a legitimate title. And Sidious was like, no, like. But you're literally yeah, he's, in he, my head. He you're want, just an assassin. You want salary, but yeah, it's yeah. like, he's, it's he's like he's on out. It's like promoting an ambitious employee instead yeah. of giving him a yeah. raise. He's exactly. like three yeah. hours extra of OT. And he's like, dude, like, like you're getting paid time and a half. Exactly. And he's like, dude, I want the benefits. <laughs> exactly, because like, in, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, that's, that's like a that's a really no, good that's way of fucked up. <laughs> all right, it's yeah. a it's a good time for breaking the <laughs> dose on your left. All right, see you in a minute. Hey there, podcast listeners. This is Millen Singh, host of Spy Fi After Dark. I'm here to just please ask you to rate and or subscribe on whatever platform you might be listening on. It really makes a really big difference to us and it makes us feel really good about ourselves. So you really should just do it for that reason alone, honestly. But seriously, it boosts our organic search rankings and makes it easier for people to find the podcast. And so it would really help us out a lot if you could shoot us a rating, subscription, whatever is applicable on whatever platform you might be listening on. Anyways, that's it for me. Let's get back to the episode. And we are back. On your right this time. There's like nothing to my right though. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. To the, the, the listener's right. I'm sure there's gotcha. something. Uh, so let's circle back to... MCU? <laughs> Keep it with the MCU. <laughs> let's, let's, let's circle back to rebuilding the the universe a little bit. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, my my pitch was pretty straightforward. It was like a guerrilla war. Yeah. Between two scrappy sides. See, I think that's that's what makes it more believable. More yeah. believable post six. And yeah. The, yeah. And post the six. struggle between Ray and Kylo is the like focal point. Mm-hmm. that we anchor around like, and I actually, even i'd even still kill off luke and eight personally i actually like that too i like the idea of them being under the apprenticeship of luke and and building tension between them right like maybe they yeah. see things differently but they're both on his, on luke's mm-hmm. side well and that's and that's there's a, a split or exactly riff. and that would have been a great way to explain well i'd, I'd have um ray would be the apprentice of luke okay kylo would be someone else's apprentice but Kylo is jealous that he's not Luke's apprentice because he thinks he's the best. And that's, that's the in the in for the Snoke, in for to, Snoke to come okay. in and take yeah. him over. I can get and then that. he kills his master to turn over to the Sith and leaves and becomes Snoke's apprentice. See, and that's, I think that right there is the most important part of what you just said to join the Sith because in, 
uh, before the rise of Skywalker, they were doing their very best to erase the Sith from history. They were like, they know, didn't even use they the term. Didn't. He's technically not Sith, right? Snoke Kylo? is not Sith. Mm. Right. And he didn't consider himself Sith. Kylo wanted to be a Sith, but he didn't understand what that meant. He, he also, just wanted to be like Vader. We talked about mm. this too. He, 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 they, he didn't embody Sith because Sith are like, at least from what I've seen in the movies, like the Sith and Jedi are actually very similar, very, very yeah. calculated and measured. And, um, they have a lot of belief in what they do and they mm. don't like exude a lot of emotion. He was extremely emotional with a lot of his behavior. I felt like I, the Sith are very like collected. The Sith are all also, about emotion. So like anger, I know, but the fear, way aggression, all that stuff they, they it's like a self-serving cycle. Yes. Like you're afraid of something. So that makes you angry. But mm-hmm. I feel like theoretically it's that or like, like their philosophy is that right. but like when you see him on screen, Kylo doesn't even, he doesn't come off to me like a Sith. Like the no. Sith are like literally like intellectuals. Like when yes. you, when you like all of them are very similar to the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, Dude, and just my, different in his belief. Yeah, or, well, you have to remember too. It's, it's a religion. There we go. They're like, yeah. it's like a they're religion. Practice it's not just like in my, in my groups. version, they're also brother, sister. Okay. See, that's, that's actually what I wanted mm-hmm. from the get go. Yeah. Cause I wanted her to be Luke's related daughter. Oh, yeah, I think either that or they're both um, Han and Leia's Han kids, and Leia's which kids. is exactly how it should. Have, that's how it is in the. I would have been okay with that. Yeah, if, either one are okay with me. That that would have been totally fine. Ray would have just been the new version of Jaina, and Kylo would have been the new version of Jason. Because mm-hmm. in the original lore, before Disney took over, Luke is actually the one that had a son named Ben, not Han and Leia. Han ah. and Leia had three kids, and Luke only had one with an ex Imperial assassin named Mara Jade who anyway um but yeah I would that, that I would have been okay with that if they were both Han's kids mm-hmm. that would have been a lot because it would have made it even tougher on Han to be like look I get where you are but I'm also not force sensitive so I don't know how to help you mm-hmm. but in the movie you're just like oh Han just ran away from his problems that's basically the theme here. The only person mm-hmm. who stayed to do something right was yeah. Leia. And even then she was just like, Oh, I believe our son will come back. I have to focus on the resistance. And I'm <laughs> still, now, now watch yeah. you fly through space. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I'm still, I'm still okay with ultimately killing off all of the old characters in the trilogy. I am too. I, I think Luke sacrificing himself to save Ray in, in eight, eight works. I think the way they did it in eight was really dumb. Yeah. But doing it, but I but would still do it. it. Yeah. 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 I, I'm fine exactly. with that. Um, Cause then you have, that's the other problem with the movies is they, they create these force powers that just do not make sense. Like Ray and Kylo can, traverse space and time to I don't hand get each other this things because <laughs> Bill and I we had it <laughs> dude I hear you I'm not I'm, thing I'm, was, I'm about to I'm, go off. I wasn't entirely against it but it wouldn't be my choice I brought his his rating down of the movie by like a whole point because oh, really? of this conversation <laughs> yeah dude, we, were, we argued in the theater for like or in, in the when okay so like I, I need you guys to understand when I was sitting in the movie theater and she goes like this to put her hand behind and then Kylo has the lightsaber. I literally out loud went, that's so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like in the theater, the hell aloud. And all these people around me were like, ha, huh? like everyone agreed. They were just like, that's so stupid. It just like, it didn't make sense to me. And like, why were they the only ones in the history of star Wars? And, to be able and to do it's, that? A, it's actually like what, so Millen, Millen looked at it in a different way. And I, I do agree with this aspect. There should always be room for creativity and for yeah. new things. But the problem with the implementation of that kind of power um, and that it's also not side bound, like, for yeah. instance, you know what I mean? All these Just things, anyone can do it. Now. Everything, all of the all of the new was prophesized mm-hmm. in nine well, and actualized in nine. It was all in one movie. That's so, the biggest problem. Yeah. Well, it all, yeah, it's, happened it all in started one movie. in 
concluded in the same movie, and you're like, there's no build up to this. Asked a yeah. million. You just need you need to have the force dyad thing be a thing from the beginning. From the beginning, and it yeah. would have been cool if Luke. But you and don't Leia even have to it. say it. You, and it was, or like you, someone else knew about it, just like anybody else knew about like, it. Like it could funny. be Snoke knows about it, but you don't have to say it until the end. Yeah, it can just be like something that's inferred almost, or mm-hmm. like you see that what they have is different than anything you've ever seen before. That was why I didn't have that much of a problem with it was because I felt like the trilogy had to bring something that was different than you've ever seen before. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, rule, each one has to keep adding like something to. different. The only so, thing I have, the only problem I have is that Star Wars can bring new things, but like it can, it can stay like abstract and more on the like philosophy side. It doesn't have to be like in the ability side because yeah. throughout Star Wars, like there again, there hasn't been like escalation of abilities. If you no. really think about it, yeah, it hasn't. They've One, two, and three actually maximize and, what you saw, and yeah. it was literally just like lightsaber bound fighting and like oh, that's force the and that's it. So this this came out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, it literally like it didn't exist, and then you're like, oh, I'm supposed to. Yeah, oh, I'm like you guys can do this. Now. Like, holy shit. Yeah, like, like exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna take this clump of dirt, and oh, look, I have a lightsaber now. Like, it's basically, it, it's not what happens, but it's then the same basic thing. Like, they can do all these things that no one taught them how to do. That they just because they have this weird special connection that was introduced 35 minutes ago, they now can do all these. And things. it was, and it's okay for them to be better and all. The problem they I have be. is that they, they cannot be worse because then you have no growth. Yes. You, you can't be worse. It, than but the, it just the it, trainer. It, it just bulldozes everything that had happened prior. So like, for instance, to yeah. me, it's like when Yoda is like 900 years old mm-hmm. and like he's literally expressed nothing different in terms of abilities than anyone else. He's just better. Yeah. At what other people that's that that's the that's the universe of Star Wars for me. And I'm OK with it. The difference is he's he's just more intelligent, yeah, he's, more knowledgeable, and he sees things coming. That's yeah, his version. More these guys are like, fuck that. We're well, just going to like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> oh, these are ideas. So, OK, but if if it were introduced earlier, you'd be OK with the dyad. Idea? I would be OK with the idea that there is some. First of all, if would you going, would you use it? Yes. Okay. If we're, uh, but I would only use it in the context of them being brother and sister. If they're two completely random people, it just does not make sense. It just doesn't because there's no connection in the current movies. There's no connection between them except the one that they create. If anything, I'm, I'm Leia, okay Leia, Leia, if anything, like uh, fucking Anakin's kids should, because Luke he, and Leia he had the highest had like count. That. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of reasons for it. For yeah. it. like well, if you want, I, I I always looked. To, I mean, I was okay with suspending disbelief mm-hmm. in this case. Like anything can happen, kind of thing. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, and that, that's the, fine. You have the to force leave that is, kind of the open force for is this. so inherently mystical that yeah, you could really come up with pretty much anything, and it's it doesn't inherently break any rules. No, of because there not. are no rules to break. Right. But you have to you have to keep it in this like kind. Of, you have to keep it in the same Death Star trench. It, 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 you can't just be like, okay, like I'm, I'm able to move things with my mind and oh shit, now I can time travel. So, like, so it, I guess the thing, the thing for me is the dyad. I don't, I think it has to not be connected to family connections because there are previous family connection Jedi where that's never been done. So it has to be something unique different, right? to them due to circumstance. And it doesn't have to have a reason. It's just, that is something that they have for some reason. And it doesn't even have to be explained. But another problem I have is that it's you also kind of sort of believe it more in nine for another wrong reason, because like suddenly Kylo and Ray are like very, very powerful and very capable as fighters in nine. Literally, if like if they had a more realistic progression, it would make even less sense. That make kind of any sense because she was essentially like the Phoenix of like Star Wars by nine. Then you're like, oh, she must have this ability. She's and like, gotta be able and, to do it. And everything. Kylo's like this ragtag, like piece of her soul that is like constantly in connection with her. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. literally dragging him and she's creating that like suspense. Yeah. Well, see, because she just became this like super powerful out of nowhere. Well, and that's that's the other thing that Nine does is by the end of Nine, you're basically sidelining Kylo. Yes. All he does he doesn't do any amazing feats of strength. He just does what he's been doing. He's, he's associated with her. Yeah. He's That's just a, there. He's essentially he like Scotty Pippen. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's Scotty Pippen. Yeah. 
and she's Jordan. Mm-hmm. That's that's literally <laughs> it. Like, it's like, all right. We'd even call him Dennis Rodman if you want to. Yeah, he's like, on the yeah, on a great team. <laughs> yeah. He's just part of the, you know, he's on the <laughs> roster. Just, I mean, he shows up. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's Tom Brady's backup, basically. That's okay. I, 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 I will say. I, I do. I think you mean he's Tom Brady's football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll call him Dan Abler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The career. Yeah. <laughs> he's the rings. He's just the result of what Tom Brady yeah. can do. <laughs> I do agree with Millen that, like, it's not an idea that can't be done. Oh, it, no, it was I'm just not saying done very improperly. I don't like it, but I still think it could have been done if it, if they just set it up maybe in seven. Yeah, if it had been in a... St- th- that's my thing, is the the sequel trilogy is just playing catch-up to the last movie. Whatever movie came before it, it's trying to play catch-up or fix problems from the previous movie. There's no actual like roadmap of con- continuity or structure. It's like, oh shit, we totally created this like plot hole. Why don't we just fix it doing this? Or like, mm-hmm. oh my God, we did all these things with Rose. Hear me out. What if she's like barely in Rise of Skywalker? And you're like, okay, why make her this huge character in The Last Jedi? It'd then- also be kind of interesting if you do want to incorporate in a new design for the the newest trilogy that like Luke and Snoke know. And yeah, that's why there's more at stake because mm-hmm. it, wherever they go, if they're on the same side, it's game over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like as a, as this diode, wherever they go, if they're like on the dark, it's fucking lights out. Yeah. If, if they're, you know yeah. what I mean. So it they're has both, to be this. Yeah. Now they're like the yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah. That's fine if they yeah. want to set that up. That's. I mean, that's why I was okay with it. Yeah. Well, and that's. I'm not opposed to it. I just. It is hard to see something like that and then be like, okay, I have to accept this because this is now canon kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of it, I'm just like, I think this is dumb and I don't consider this Star Wars. Like I left The Last Jedi thinking that was not a Star Wars movie. I have no idea what I just watched, but that was not a Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. But if I could change like the overarching thing of anything I would change about those is I would actually have like legitimate real lightsaber battles. None of the none of the sequels have decent lightsaber fights. The Force Awakens, they're literally just running through the forest, hacking at each other. There's no like there is some charm to it. Well, OK, so because like it's like ba- it's like post six. Right. And so like so I like trained like he knows. That's, OK, she should be like amateurish. She, yeah. That's true. He shouldn't be. He And he is. So like when he's fighting Finn and Finn has very little melee combat training and you know that because you watch him throughout with the lightsaber like he has mm. some enough to fight off the shock trooper or whatever but um it's a good point kylo, kylo is trained yeah. he is very acrobatic he's very capable but then that kind of like goes away later on like he's just they're hacking and then like they're chasing after each other and then they take another broad swing at each other and well it's definitely not three no it's definitely not three because there's th- yeah. two and three are like there's but, no yeah all right, three, yeah, like three all is right. the greatest lightsaber battle of all time. All right, so which last, one? Palpatine and oh, sorry. Well, I was gonna say, okay, which one is it? You can answer. Oh, that Anakin and you like that one? Oh, okay, one, yeah. yeah. I actually like so that one. That one. The one problem I have with that fight is that it's a. It seems a little too. Uh, what's the word? Choreographed. Yeah, it's a. Yeah. It's more like a very very fast and pretty dance. dance. Yeah, dance. Yeah. The one for me that really like made me go, oh my god, was the Yoda Dooku fight. Oh my god, people freaked out in the in the yeah. in the theater. Everybody freaked people out. When lost. I saw that. And I was a kid when I watched. It. <laughs> yeah, people so people lost their shit. Yeah. I was thirteen. I think yeah. I was like seven. Yeah. Okay. And Damn, make me feel old. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, like. No, that was awesome because <laughs> every totally, no one had totally, seen like it re like no for me episode two like reinvented my conception of Star Wars. Yeah, absolutely. I no one had ever seen Yoda fight before. It was just like oh, it's this but not even year old just like everything like, about episode two basically reinvented my whole mm-hmm. perception of the franchise. Yeah, because all of a sudden the world like blows up in mm-hmm. scale. You've got all these new characters. You've got uh, the clone troopers. You've yep. got. The, all the Jedi coming into the arena, the arena in yep. Geonosis. Oh. It, it basically shows where everything came from. It explains yeah. the whole story that Obi-Wan uses yeah. in A New Hope. He's like, so. you found the Clone Wars? And it's like, oh, dude, let me show you an entire movie about this 
whole thing. So, okay. So last topic, cause we've got just a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you do with Finn? <laughs> I would honestly, I would still make him a defector from the empire. Uh huh. Cool. Looking for, I mean, honestly, I would even make him force sensitive. Yeah. I'm okay make, with that. I like make that. him throughout the movies grow and develop these powers alongside Ray and having him there to, to explain like, dude, this is the four be like a, someone who's amazed by the force. Whereas Ray had been trained her whole life. She's, she's watered down to the amazement of the force. She's, he could be this like way of helping her see the force in a new light and coming to terms with like, I have this great power. I've been given this great gift. Mm hmm. Finn is like he's right. This is an amazing thing that I'm oh, capable like he of doing. He constantly invigorates her, yeah, just with optimism, kind of thing. Exactly, and then along the way, her tutelage teaches him these are the things I can do. These aren't just myths. These aren't just stories or exaggerated tales. I really can move things with my mind, and I can have a light. And in the third one, have him make his own lightsaber, like Luke made his own lightsaber. So, does he survive the trilogy? And if so, does he become her? apprentice at the end i think i would definitely have him survive the trilogy but i would have him be a fully fledged jedi knight by the end of it i would have ray accept her position as the new grandmaster of the jedi order and have finn having gone through everything they've gone through in these three movies those are his trials to end his apprenticeship and become a knight Okay. Because it would allow you to create this thing of like, now it's Ray's Jedi Order and you can make all these new stories and like, this is how she trains the new, the new Jedi or whatever. And I mean, even the Rise of Skywalker kind of does that. It implies Finn has some kind of force powers because he can sense Ray. But at the end of the Rise of Skywalker, you don't have any sense that she's going to start rebuilding the order other than she has a new lightsaber now there's no direction yeah there you have no idea where no. this is going to go now there's no definitive like this is the plan at the end of return of the jedi you knew luke was going to rebuild the jedi you knew he had saved the galaxy you know that everybody was grateful for him um and that they were going to start rebuilding based on the victory of the empire this you're just like okay well she kylo's dead everyone that she's known is dead she just has a new lightsaber and she's back at Luke's house. <laughs> what, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's, I would just make it a more like definitive. Now we go forward kind of thing. This is like, what do we, I don't setting know what up to repeat kind yeah, of exactly. Star Wars a whole setup, uh, a new, yeah. A new stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a satisfying conclusion. Yeah, I agree. It's been great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any, any final thoughts to end here? I love Star Wars more than the MCU. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's I mean, fine. I, I love the MCU, but you know, it's Star Wars, dude. <laughs> All right. I'm like, Star Wars has been growing on me more and more, but to me, the MCU is phenomenal. Oh, like, yeah. I don't understand how, how flawless it has been minus like captain marvel which i haven't seen but have heard bad it's, things it's all planning dude it's mm-hmm. kevin feige it's phenomenal planning. yeah my my final thought is kevin feige is a genius yep. he should be the chief creative officer of disney <laughs> at large and on your left signing <laughs> off <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs>